engage in dentistry and dental technology students through opportunities to communicate. Dr. Jane Evans is a senior lecturer in the School of Dentistry and Oral Health at Griffith University, Australia. She has researched, designed, and developed the Bachelor of Oral Health in Dental Technology as the inaugural degree program for dental technology in Australia. And she will talk to us about the communication and relationship in between dental technicians, dentists, and dental students. Dr. Evans. Thank you. Thank you to IADAE for inviting me today. So today we're going to look at the context um, or consider the context of the environment that we're working in as dental educators, uh, communication and methods of interprofessional learning and uh, work integrated learning as uh, methods to inform and help communication. I've particularly selected these uh, uh, in Aust first Australian Indigenous um, paintings because they depict communication. This is the way the Aboriginal people communicated with each other, where water holes were and that type of thing. So I thought it was particularly pertinent to the today and thank Nellie Green for that. So we know that our context of dental education is somewhat um, disjointed when it comes to prosthetics. We have some difficulties that we deal with constantly in terms of the dentist, dental technicians relationships. Uh, and some schools now do not longer have uh, dental technology or prosthetics education wrapped around um, uh, the service provision more so of prosthetic services. Uh, the dental laboratory is no longer on site in a lot of universities. But we also have the other side where we're including some more shared learning opportunities with uh, all the oral health care providers. So we know that there's been a lack of communication between the dentist and dental technician since it's been documented since 1974 in Sweden and still last year we're still writing about it. We're still publishing the lack of communication. But this has some ethical and legal ramifications. We know that the dentist is ultimately responsible. We teach the student that they are responsible. There's um, legislation around this. But often the responsibility is sent to the dental technician to make the choice on dental material selection, design, and some critical issues. That's fine in a situation where dental technicians are registered and monitored, but in some countries, that's not happened. So the quality of written uh, prosthetics prescriptions is critical for the work to, um, to be successful for the patient. So the literature tells us that this is a problem. Um, so at Griffith University in Queensland, Australia, we looked at these issues and thought, okay, so what can we do to make some changes? So when establishing the dental school, we established oral health therapy and dental technology within that uh, a suite of programs. Uh, oral health therapy is no longer um, being taught, but the two, dental technology and dentistry, are being taught together. So just to give you an idea of the context where we're sitting in Australia, we're sitting there at the Gold Coast and a little bit uh, south of Brisbane. And this is where we are, oh, where are we? And at the moment, we're somewhere over here in Hungary. So looking at the size and comparison and um, just picturing where we are. So we're situated uh, on that coastal strip just a little way back from the waterway. So our school has grown uh, quite big over the last 11 years since we commenced. So as a dental school, we're quite a young school, only been going for 11 years. Uh, but our health group has over 5,000 students and our dental school is, um, I think recently, been called the largest in Australia. So the work we're doing is quite significant. We've had advocates around for some years to bring dental technicians and dental dentistry education together. 
but it was in 2004 that Griffith took this approach and at the time we called it a shared learning or common curriculum. It's now really known as an interprofessional uh, curriculum because we, we, with the view that it's uh, going to improve the output for the patient care if the dentist and dental technician can talk together. With it, interprofessional education, and next year we'll hear much more in Barcelona, no doubt. But it's about learning with, from, and about each other. So we learned earlier this morning that um, from Eddie that we need a multidisciplinary team to deal with the healthcare issues. But in the first instance, I think as dental um, health educators, we need to actually teach our students to communicate within our team and with each other um, as a core uh, component to then uh, reaching out to the other professions as well. So it helps interprofessional education is known to help with the communicating on a similar level, sharing each other's roles and knowledge of those roles, but also giving them common goals uh, and knowing what each other needs. When Tricia talked before and we had to ask each other what our goal was of today being here, it, it's a similar thing in when the dentist is taking an impression and the dental technician receives the impression. The dental technician needs to be professionally responsible and say, I can't make my end goal on that impression if it's not covering all the surfaces needed. So it's about communicating and have the uh, confidence and ability to exchange. So that it's that um, verbal exchange and knowledge of what each other needs in each circumstance that, that can help. My research has shown that it's best uh, when it's experienced around real life patient care. Um, so at Griffith, we're giving students opportunities to communicate straight from orientation. So all of a sudden, they're not just sitting, listening, they have to be engaged with each other and um, make some connections on that first day in orientation. And that goes all the way to um, the comprehensive oral health care in team-based uh, treatment planning. So the model that we've, we've um, oh, I guess, designed for an IP curriculum with the dental school is that we're looking at the student commencing, continuing and then graduating through the phases and starting as a novice and moving to mastery, but looking at them first as an individual, then how do they collaborate and work as a team and then a focus on the patient. So, because we know that the person comes with many things in their mind already of what they perceive of themselves as an individual, how much scientific knowledge they have underpinning, underpinning uh, what they're going to be doing, the knowledge, skills and attitudes uh, that they come with and need to develop so that they can communicate professionally throughout. Uh, so, this really is underpinning um, I guess the whole curriculum focus. And we do this through a guiding process of, it's a really through coaching. So the first years, there's a lot of didactic team building, reflective journals, and then moving into a clinical environment that it's a continual spiral of coaching and um, informing and behavior changing by use of reflective journals and um, a variety of mentors as well across several teams. So in work integrated learning, we're bringing the, um, the whole, I mean, it's really what we've done all the time in dentistry. We've always done uh, work integrated learning because we have to uh, give the students that that experience. But we also have to give them the experience to communicate with each other and the broader uh, health team as well. So we know that it develops a stronger professional identity. 
If the dental technician has a sense of who they are in that team, they're more likely to ask those questions and to um, be aware of the clinical inference, uh, um, impact of their role. It also gives students a genuine opportunity for reflection and then making changes. Making changes through those five or however many years of dental uh, school that the student is there for, that time of transformation is critically important. All dental educators will have seen the people in the first year and then be, you know, so proud or happy or uh, to see those final year students and to see how they progress. In uh, the dental technology program, we have a course called professional practice that um, is based with dentistry students in the team-based treatment planning program, which incorporates three, years three, four, and five of dentistry. The professional practice course and this treatment, uh, team-based treatment planning program brings those students together for really meaningful uh, clinical interactions. So they have to meet, they have to um, have structured uh, communication between each other. And it's all with uh, patient outcomes. The dental technician has oh, seven or eight dental students they work with. So it's like having their own lab. They've got jobs sitting on the bench that have to be ready for a specified time. It, it really simulates the, the working environment. So there's no surprise what's going to happen on graduation. And generally, these people are going to work better um, with a combined effort. There's no doubt about it. And it's breaking down the barriers. I mean, we've only been doing this for maybe four years now. So we're seeing um, uh, more change as the students are doing it for longer. So the results of the professional practice, we only have small numbers of dental technology students, but that puts a figure on the um, prosthetic services that are provided in only one semester of the year. So what, this, and this is one reason that why dental technology is still in the university at Griffith University, because we are <laughs> making some financial contribution. It's much easier to see on this slide. We have small numbers. My aim is to have 25 students and 25 students sit there for three years. But as you can see, I start with 25 and we don't, uh, we don't keep them. But you can see the increase of the services uh, that we can provide. So this is with the dental, uh, the dentist as well. Our uh, qualitative uh, surveys with the students have shown positive aspects in terms of communication, um, their real life experience, but time is problematic and um, a, a multiple of cases. So we know that IPE and will combined gives very good communication between the two. Um, more thoughtful uh, prescriptions are also provided. To some extent, much closer collaborations. And we're seeing when dental technicians graduate, their dentists, when they graduate, are sending their prosthetic work to these technicians in practice. So it's good for their employment prospects because they have built uh, professional relationships. And they also know what each other requires uh, across, across their roles. Um, some words of some students is one, building the this, this solid relationships that um, dentistry and dental technology students don't always um, have at that at that level. They have the same communication language that they can use to talk about cases as well. And the dental technician, uh, the dentist, sorry, uh, respects the role uh, of the other team members. So, um, but these things provide challenges. Uh, sometimes we have few advocates for the uh, relationship of the dentist and the dental technician in the university. Um, Timetabling is already very full with um, many procedures and different techniques. So coordinating 
dental science students with dental technology students in the team-based treatment planning is almost a job for one person. And then having the tutors to be there for every individual session. It's very time consuming, very demanding. People need to be very committed and believe in that whole process for it to have been so successful um, that it is at the moment. And it continues to change because we have different demands, different types of care as well, and different technologies with CAD CAM and, and uh, so forth. So we've had to evolve as well. So we acknowledge the challenges uh, that are there. But what we've really learned, and I think what's important for our um, dental education, is that the, the theory has to be relevant to all groups of the oral health team. They have to see their relevance. The, the technology students will tell me, I don't need to learn this chemistry. Well, of course they have to learn the chemistry, but we need to put it into this, um, to the setting that they can relate to and be inspired by. And it needs to be accessible. The meetings in the team-based treatment planning they have to be documented. It doesn't matter if they do it online or how they meet, but these have to be documented so they then can be assessed um, and using um, how they engage, reflective journals. And when it's based around real patient care, everybody's attitudes automatically just change. Um, and the dental technician can go to the clinic uh, also I guess the difference is that we have the prosthetists, the dental, clinical dental technicians in this team as well, which adds another layer uh, to that. So I guess um, from there, it's a time for uh, creativity to maybe approach uh, dental uh, education effectively. We can create and communicate opportunities for collaboration and uh, bring that dental team together through some of these opportunities. Are there any questions? Sorry, I've probably run through that a little more quickly than quickly than I sorry. There is one question on the There's one question on the Padlet. Time management of the practice is required in our programs. It's a position rather than a question, but I think how could time of the practice could be managed and this is required in our programs, the educational programs? Uh, how a practicing dentist manages his time and how can okay. this be educated in the programs, maybe? Yeah, time management, that's a really uh, definitely a critical point of view, a critical component. Um, I guess it's a preparation from the dental technician's point of view. It's uh, 